Whose older. beard's longer, yours or mine? Yours is right now. I believe I believe oh, Ross wins the longest beard contest. This is pretty big. I'm Shelley Palmer. I'm Ross Martin. And you're listening to Think About This. Today, talking Teslas and my in-depth interview with one of the most renowned musicians and inventors on the planet. Plus, using AI. Wait, whoa, Ross, wait, musician did you interview? Like, I should have been part of that conversation. That's like, the thing, Shelley. You are that musician. Oh, Jesus. I have a bad feeling. Don't about worry. This. Don't worry. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's just finish the setup. Everybody, welcome to Think About This. The more you listen, the less you know. So, Shelly, last week we totally forgot to talk about the Grammys. Yeah. But, like, I still remember pausing the show because I saw you in the crowd. Did you have a good time? The Grammys were awesome in yeah. every way. It looked good. I yeah. mean, people are still talking about it two weeks later. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did it feel like in the room for you, and how were the Grammys different than ever before? Well, in the room, it was a very sad day Yeah, because we lost Kobe Bryant that day, and I think and you were in the Staples Center. We were in the Staples Which Center. Which is where he- Kind of the house he, that he Kobe built. That. built. Yeah. yeah. But what's, what was most amazing to me about that day was the immense talent of Alicia Keys. Mm. Like you, you don't know how talented someone is until you know they've been rehearsing for a week to do something. And then that day they switch gears and do something else. Right. And she came out with Boys to Men open the show in the most touching vocal. And it was- amazing to watch someone at that talent level that close up just well, the thing about alicia do the, do the job the two artists that i have had the pleasure of working with who put in the most time and effort of anyone i've ever seen are beyonce who never stops rehearsing yeah and alicia keys and the thing about alicia is that she brings this calm like wisdom uh it's like transcendent yeah on the stage and you wouldn't even it, it doesn't even look like she's trying she's just being her but she rehearses more than anybody. Yeah, and, and that's so, a funny thing about performance, Ross. You know, that's the funny thing about performance. You make it look easy by practicing relentlessly. And used to say, well, my mom and dad um, were music educators. They owned music stores. I grew up in a pretty musical household. And I was doing drill sheets on piano when I was four years old. And my father's take on this was practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Yeesh. And the idea was, you know, just keep doing it exactly right at any speed. Like there's a way to practice. And I think a lot of people, a lot of musicians know this. A lot of people don't understand. It doesn't just happen. It looks like it just happens. Yep. It just happens after you spend hundreds of hours making sure that it's going to happen when it looks like it's just instant. Or if you're not a human and you just train an algorithm to do it, here's what I would love to talk about with you and get your take on. I was talking with Jesse Angelo, who's the president of Vice. Yeah. And he's the one who first told me that labels and agents are now signing algorithms. Yeah. They're literally signing algorithms to record deals. Can you explain that? Well, I think that's the kind of misunderstanding of the technology that happens really early. Okay. Sure, you can attempt to sign an algorithm, but it's not going to be a single algorithm and it's not going to be signable. So if you think about what the Grammys are now, there are, there are categories, R&B, hip hop, jazz, classical, spoken word, and they try to give peer reviewed awards inside these categories, these broad based categories, right. and musicologists kind of figure out what each song is. Is it you know, is it hip hop? Is it R&B? Is it pop? Is it rock? You'll know it when you hear it. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. What does it mean to play rock and roll? Well, there's a set of rules that make something rock and roll. There's a set of rules that make something jazz. There's a some set of rules that make something classical. People don't think about it that way, but music, especially stylistically, is very algorithmic. If I listened to Oscar Peterson and I said, I want to play a solo like Oscar. There are a half a dozen things I can do that would hint to the audience that I was paying homage to an Oscar Peterson solo. If I want to do a Jimmy Page solo, if I want to do a, uh, you name your artist, it doesn't matter who is a Coltrane solo, any, any artist, the John Mayer guitar thing. What makes John Mayer John Mayer are certain algorithmic approaches to music that he does automatically that if I mimic, I'm going to sound like John Mayer. That's right. Not the exact John Mayer. No, that's right. Like John Mayer-ish, yeah. right? So 
this is a perfect zone for AI. Then there's the whole other side of this, which is the sonic quality of songs, because they also award Grammys for best immersive experience or best instrumental composition. Uh, they look at the sonic quality as well as the complexity of the work. When you think about mixing, right, there's always been this idea that if you take blue and you take red and you pour it into the same cup and you get purple, that you'll never be able to separate out the blue and the red from the liquids, right? The blue liquid and the red liquid, you pour it into one thing, now it's purple and it's purple forever. And that's what a music mix is, right? Once you add the drums and the bass and the piano and the vocals and the strings and all, it's all mixed together now, you're not gonna be able to unmix it. Well, that was true, it's not true anymore. And so because it's not true anymore, because AI models can in fact dissect 100% of music that way, you can pull things out, put things in, remix, change the sonic quality, change the early reflections, late reflections, which you would call echo and reverb. You can make so many changes with the computer now that you don't need to have those skills initially going and you can quote, fix it in the mix. This is what I'm saying. Why do you need Diplo? when you can just have AI Diplo. So deep fake technology, if on one side, these generative adversarial networks that are making deep fakes, when you apply them interestingly to music, you get musical styles. So you get mu musical performers, you get musical mimicking, you get new music that's based on old music. And that's why I started saying, signing a specific algorithm doesn't make a lot of sense because if you have an AI model that does John Coltrane very well, you might have another AI model that that does um, fine. You set you sign a set of suite, a suite of them that Let's does Phine say, Phineas fine. Eilish very well. I, oh yeah, I love Phineas. <laughs> right, um, but here and he was he was they were amazing. They were great. But, yeah, but here's the thing. Do you know how much less of a pain in the ass it is to represent AI? Is AI ownable? Yeah. Why? Because it may be commoditized AI, like for because right because blockchain. No, stop it. <laughs> no, think about it for a minute. If you want to recognize speech, you can rent. Uh, Amazon Web Services, yes. and you can go ahead and you can rent Lex and Polly, and you can empower your device to hear and speak. No problem whatsoever. Now, your device hears and speaks, but Amazon's the engine behind that. And let's say you use another engine maybe to do some natural language understanding as opposed to the processing. So I've got Amazon doing the processing. Maybe I'm using Google to do the understanding. Well, Think about that musically. I'm going to use Joe's algorithm to play the music. I'm going to use Harry's algorithm to write the music. I'm going to use Sally's algorithm to mix the music. And if I put it all together in a unique way, who owns it? The three people that did the algorithm? I, I mean, it's impossible to even understand how this is going to work into the future. Here's a crazier part. What is personalized music do to all of this? I can have AI writing music for me that's in the style I like, and it can take a good guess at where it's going to be. Do I give Grammys to recommendation engines that are just composing for me? So Shelly, think about this. Warner Music made history in 2019. On March 25th, Warner Music signed an algorithm. Mm -hmm. Here's what they did. One of the largest record labels in the world signs an algorithm called Endel, E-N-D-E-L. Yes developed by an eponymous German tech firm to a record deal. Eponymous, that means same name. Same name, very good. I'm just, and so, I wanted everyone to know that. So think about this. That means yeah. that that algorithm, which now has a record deal with Warner Music, is label mates with the likes of Cardi B, uh -huh. Madonna, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. And this means that it's just a matter of time before the Recording Academy designates a new award for best algorithm that winner is called to the stage <laughs> and think about this. Nobody comes up because there isn't anybody. Ross, that is exactly the same. And I mean exactly the same as me, Warner Brothers or Warner Music signing Ross Martin, the artist, which I would do immediately Thank because you. of your fine musical talent and your piano. Think about that. Shelly, Capital One knows that life doesn't actually like call you up or like send you an alert about something on your credit card. No, it doesn't. It doesn't life doesn't do it doesn't that. Doesn't do that. No. And that's why they created Eno. Is that a mnemonic for them? It is the Capital One assistant. Oh. And here's the thing about it that I love. It catches things that might look wrong with your credit card. And it also like flags duplicate charges or potential fraud. Uh -huh. By the way, I am paying my car lease uh, twice a month by accident. And it alerted me to that. Cool. And my wife was like, what is going on here? But but it alerted me. Eno alerted me to that before Jordana did. 
Wow, Ross. Uh, and then it sends the alert to your phone, and then it helps you like figure out how to fix it. Well, that just sounds like another way. Capital One is watching out for you, Ross, and obviously they should watch out for your money because you clearly aren't. Oh, wait. I get to say this now. I've always wanted to say this. Oh, my this. God. Here, no, it comes. here it comes. Here it comes. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Yeah, so, yeah. What's in your wallet? Your wallet. Well, wait. We'll try what's to, in your wallet? What's in your wallet? See CapitalOne.com for details. I got it right. You did it. Go to CapitalOne.com. That's it. Hey, Ross. Chuck. So I got to tell you what, we're working right now on an AI-assisted tool set that does three things. Okay. First, it does mixing and mastering. So what it what happens is when you finish a piece of music, you need to master it so that it can be distributed. And you master it so that it's going to sound as good as it can sound on the average stereo system right, or earbuds right. or home got speaker. You, you, you master for distribution. That is really easy to do by AI. We already use a lot of plugins. And so the question is, I want to analyze 50 of the best rock and roll mixes of all time that master recordings. And then I want to, I want to have that sonority to my master. So we're doing that. Then we've got a whole bunch of AI composer assists where I need to write something in a Western style, rock and roll style, R and B style. I need to do a jazz style. I need to do a crunchy crossover, whatever it is. We've analyzed it and it starts to fill in blanks for you. Now, this kind of general design has been going on in the car business and the, the drawing business and drafting business from Autodesk for a really long time. If you say you're designing a car, you pick up your stylus and you start drawing a circle, it knows it's a tire. You start drawing a fender, it right, knows it right. and it fills it's it intuitive. in. It well, it. so we took the same concept and said, okay, I'm going to start with this oh, chord music. This chord progression, I'm going to start That's here. Interesting. And as you start playing the chord progression, it starts feeling like the one we're working on right now is coolest thing ever. Whenever you play, you play with uh, tones, obviously, and chords. That's the chord structure, melody and, and, and harmony. But there's also meter and rhythm. And so you imply meter and rhythm, especially on piano, where you're kind of playing all of these things. You're mm -hmm. playing melody and harmony and meter and rhythm all at the same time. So what this algorithm does, it picks up the implied rhythm mm -hmm. that you're playing and it figures out, well, you're playing something that feels 4-4 four, 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 and feels very rock and rollish and it starts to like fill stuff in. So it starts to put a rock and roll drum beat behind you and it picks it, it kind of picks up your tempo. And if tempo. you don't like what it does, can you, you can, tell it to chill out or change Well, it? what you do in our case is you basically tap the space bar and then you start over, but eventually right. we're going to figure out how to like talk to it and say, hey, no, no, I want it more like blank. But, but it it's cool. You're developing an, a, a collaborative relationship well, it, that's right. with AI. That's right. And so this is an AI co-worker. It's a co-working tool cool. or a co-creation tool. I think you're going to make a lot of money on that. M maybe. You don't even have to, you don't have to do the podcast anymore. <laughs> maybe, but it's an experiment. It's an experiment in co-creation. Yes. Um, and it's also experimentation with the algorithmic nature of music. So you start to write a piece of Baroque music and it sort of fills in the counterpoint because that's very rule-based. Then you start to play a piece of classical music and it starts to fill in the four-part harmony in a classical way right. against, against the classical rule base, not, not some no, like it. way you take it out, like, it. but it gives you a place to start. The thing we're working on third is, okay, is this AI model we're creating now, is it a rule base and training set for a completely autonomous composer, which you can ask to do things in styles? And there's plenty of guys out there working on this. Uh, this is our stuff we're working on ourselves, but there's at least 20 programs out there that I'm aware of where people are doing really, really Don't cool stuff. Don't you think this is going to transform music education? Because you don't really need that much help from your AI. But if I'm a four-year-old and I'm beginning to compose music, I really need the AI to do a lot of the heavy lifting. I think it's going to fundamentally change the way we communicate non-verbally. And I think ultimately the exact same technology is going to fundamentally change the way we, we communicate visually as mm. well, because all these tools are basically the same tools. They're matching patterns from something we've told and they're assembling them for something and, and they're making them indistinguishable from the things we do ourselves. And I think, Ross, if we're honest, if we're truly honest about the future of work and the future of creativity, we've talked about this before. A lot of the stuff that you do that's worky work, day-to-day -day work, uh, background music underneath sound effects and dialogue, uh, uh, an ad that has a picture behind it. Right. But totally the, unnecessary for humans to do that. You, you just don't need- It's not going to happen. Right? You could pick a style. Now, right. you could argue that you need the first creative spark, and sure. I, I agree. But once you get into a genre, how many times you sat in a meeting and said, ah, I need some Bob Marley-ish that's going to yeah, go on this course. thing. I, it's got to imply the islands. Get me some pictures that yeah. step palm trees or something. Exactly. Like you say stuff like that. Well, you're only, and then, and then whoever you're talking to, you're, you're limited to their consideration set. Whatever that is. Right. But yeah. if I'm talking to AI, 
There right. is no consideration. No, set. it's the it's infinity body of knowledge of mankind. Exactly. So, which might be overwhelming. So that's why you need rules you to, need cut, to train it. cut it down and train it. So I feel like we are we're right on the verge yes. of something very very special happening and also very scary. And when you you, know, you made a joke about the Grammys going look, to the best algorithm, I think it's a little different than that in the future. I'm wondering with personalization. Mm -hmm music starts to be made for me for the situation i'm in right there is no song it's a million versions of the same song and then there's the other probable future which is that people start to make music any way they make it whether right. it's assisted or not it's there it doesn't matter but i watch um kids today my my granddaughters and my kids different generations and each of them has such specific unique taste in music. I used to say when I was full-time writing music, everybody has two jobs. Then they're an expert in two things, what they do for a living and music. Right? Everybody knows the music. They, right. They're an expert in the music they like best. That's right. And they'll they'll tell you about it. They they. It's usually the music that was popular between your ages of 14 and 17 that you think is the best in the world. Yes. And then everybody else's music suck, but you have your own musical tastes. So what happens as we become fractionalized the way we social media has sort of made these small micro tribes and each tribe shares fashion and shares dialect and shares music how do you actually put all of those fractionalized styles of music together into anything that you'd consider a macro category what is edm if there's 1500 versions yeah, there of is it? no category there's no box it's all intersectional and i'll give you an example of that in real life i get home it's nine o'clock at night Theo is in our living room. Uh, I, I walk in and I think I hear Jay-Z and Kanye, and I do. It's Watch the Throne. He's playing the entire album, but he's playing it on cello accompanying. How cool. And I'm like, he's playing cello to Kanye and Jay-Z rapping. Yeah, and he knows all the parts, and I never even knew that he knew half those songs. Hey, I don't he's a even good know musician, that, Theo. He really is. But he's sort of thinking like, there's no difference between a classical instrument like the cello and what Kanye and Jay are doing in, on that album. Like no. it's the same thing to well, him. Well, first of all, music is music, right? It doesn't matter what you're playing. Music is music. You can I, you can clap your hands, be musical. You can play cello and be musical. Yeah. You can play flute. You can play trumpet, guitar. It doesn't matter what. It, it was is. intense. And and by the way, the cello just became really cool. Yeah, I cool. know it was cool before. It but was now it's cooler. Yeah, no, cello is an awesome yeah. instrument. At the end of the day, Ross, this is going to be a fundamental shift in the way we think about all forms of communication. Music, though, because it's so personal. It's likely to meet a lot of resistance in some ways, and I think it's going to be really well accepted in others. One of the things I love most about today, I had to practice relentlessly when I was a kid to get performance skills together so I could make you hear what I heard in my head. Yep. If I heard it in my head, I had to be able to realize it on piano or saxophone or with an orchestra or with a band. Some way I had to get it onto tape. Th th these were the, the techniques I needed to learn. My granddaughters go to their computer or their tablet or their smartphone and they pull down stuff, the floats and, and samples, and then they make up lyrics. And all of a sudden they've got this tremendous ability to communicate musically, to emote musically, to emote in a way that other people can feel. And they don't have to spend endless hours practicing. Is it the same kind of music? I say yes. A lot of my friends who are musicians who have put in the time say no. And there's a big rift between those who had to quote work for it and those who just got it gifted to them i am of the belief that any way that you make music it's an inclusive beautiful amazing way to bring people together and to let them feel what you feel but that's the macro vision of music right so is that grammy worthy oh, yeah because i'm nominating your two granddaughters for a grammy. i would but i don't know that the grammy organization and i don't mean to take a shot at them but i don't know that they're ready yet. to go to tiktok yet. or ready to go to youtube they have to. and see what a nine-year-old is doing or disparate nine-year-olds and say this is nope. this is this mashup which is important to them and emotes what they are feeling Fine, then they can keep doing what they're doing yeah. on television yeah. and the rest of the world will pass them by. <laughs> this is me saying it, not you. Yeah, no. I, I, look, at the end of the day, music is evolutionary and I am, I am really thrilled at the state of the art. You, you know. know you stood in front of the Grammy board and what did you tell them? Well, pretty much that. 
pretty much. Right. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much. I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but like people look, nobody's going to hate the Grammys. No. But if they don't continue to evolve, it will just become irrelevant. Yeah, I think that's true. But by the way, the Grammy organization is incredible. It was a great show. And the show was good. Yeah, the show was good. But I mean, the Recording Academy, you know, the people there are dedicated um, musicians and people who are are supporters of the arts, the tremendous engineers, amazing talent. And the big earners are all Recording Academy members. So, you know, it's not like the music business is hurting for great talent. We have great talent. But I do think that music is evolving and it's become more democratized and more egalitarian. Mm-hmm. And I think it's accessible to more people. Thank you, Steve Jobs. Thank you, all technologists in Silicon Valley who have made basically plugins and toys and musical things that people can just play with. All the sampling, all of the, oh my goodness, all the software that's available today. It's unbelievable what you can do if you can hear anything in your head. Or even if you just want to know it when you feel it, right? You just start throwing stuff at the wall and go, oh, this sounds good. How many times have I heard that? You know, you're sitting in an office and like, hey, Shelly, listen to what I made. It's like, wow, that's cool. And if someone took the time to make it, you should give it the respect to listen to, right? You have to be a student of the art because you could get schooled in the art by someone who just felt something that they wanted you to feel and maybe it was important. Think about that. Okay, Ross, here's my favorite story of the day. Okay. Elon Musk, because of safety regulations, is required to put external speakers in his Teslas. Right. If I the, know I know where you're going with this. If the car is traveling under 19 miles an hour, it must make a noise so that pedestrians yes. can know that something's coming. Once you get up above about 20 miles an hour, the tire noise and the- Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I make think, you know there's a car. I think this first started- Back with what was the first hybrid car, like the the Prius? Is the you Prius. mean the Prius? Yes, 2011. The law, the, the National, Prius yeah, was too quiet, to mm-hmm. and and they had to make it a little bit louder so that you knew it was actually right next to you. Correct. They, they were, the, or about to hit you. The National Highway Transportation Safety Board. Uh, it's not NTSB. NTS. It's the hi, it's not NTSB. It's the Highway Safety NHS. I, NH, yeah, whatever. all those guys. Alphabet Soup Highway. Yes, the Alphabet Soup Highway guys made a law. That's a regulation that said you have to have, you know, some way to make a noise. And they didn't specify whether it would be a beep or a car sound. They just said if you're under 20 miles an hour, you don't know the car is there and it's sneaking up on you. So anyway, Tesla had to put external speakers into Teslas. And of course, Elon Musk now is going to have them be able to talk to external human beings. So his his thing so weird. the other day, hey, what are you standing there staring for? I'm cool looking. I'm a Tesla. Why don't you just get in for a ride? Hop in. I was like, seriously? <laughs> you cannot make that up. Right. So but that, I would just drive mine and have the ice cream truck sound come out of it. Of course. So here's the thing. Car's already a robot with wheels, right? A Tesla drives itself. It's got self-driving mode. It, everything about that is AI driven. And now it talks. So this is somewhere between Kit from Knight Rider. It's Kit. Yeah. Or or if you go back a little farther, it's my mother, the car. But you remember that, by the way, from the Yeah, 60s? of course. Yeah. I, I was a little- you were little. Not born. I, I, you were actually I not born. Little, not I was born. little and you were not born. Yeah. But it did rerun. Like it only was one season and it was really stupid. This is a guy's mom comes back uh, uh, through his car radio. It was a 60s sitcom less than oh, one season. My weird. mother, the car. It was the craziest premise ever. But by the way, that was their technology. They had radios in the car. They couldn't imagine the car's doing anything else. Elon Musk doesn't have to imagine. He's put damn speakers in the car and now I can just talk to you. Here's what's awesome about this. You're going to be able to talk into your Apple Watch and have whatever you say come out of giant speakers in your freaking Tesla. So I may be like down the street, but I see that my friend is walking by my car and I'm like, hey, Shelly. And you're like, wait, where's Ross? He's in the car. No, I'm not. I'm down the street. See, the way I figure it, they're going to give the car some image recognition. It's going to know somebody's walking up to it. And the car is just, when you get up to it, it's like, oh, hi, Ross. Shelly will be here in a minute. Oh, Jesus. The car's just going to know. Think about that. (laughs) Hold on. We're not ending this episode without hearing more cello from the very real and human 10-year-old future Grammy winner, Theo Martin. How about a little John Williams, Theo? (laughs) Thank you. 
Nice. Play us out with that white stripes thing. That's Theo Martin. Don't forget to leave us a five-star rating at Apple Podcasts, a quick comment or review, and thank you for downloading and subscribing to Think About This with Shelley Palmer and Ross Martin. If you think you know less than you did before, just wait until our next episode on the Westwood One Podcast Network.